Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over part two of what is in your food and why. This is going to be the ingredient search. So you're going to find out a little bit more about what the role each ingredient plays and the purpose for all the ingredients as they're added to the food to make that finished food product. So I'm just going to go over the description of the assignment, which again, you can find in the assignment tab in Canvas. Here we go. What is in your food and why? Part two. In part two, you will be taking a deep dive into the ingredient world to find out why each ingredient listed on the label is added to the food. What role does the ingredient play? Does it provide a nutrition, flavor, texture, preservation function? Is the manufactured food world well, I, I'm sorry, I got, uh, I was just reading too much and uh, forgot what I wrote there. In the manufactured food world, no ingredient is added for no reason. So there's nothing by accident. So basically, uh, I just got excited with the dramatic questions. That's what I was going for there. But I forgot that there was only two of them. So the first place that you need to look for each ingredient is going to be the FDA substances added to food inventory. And I'm gonna show you the link in a second. Well, I'll click the link in a second, but here's the link to that inventory right there. And you're going to use additional sources as necessary to complete the assignment according to the rubric. Pay close attention to the instructions as some of the format is different than part one. Message or email me with any questions, of course. So one of the differences in part one you were required to submit the image file as a separate, well, the image as a separate file. But for part two, what we're doing, and that brings us right into the rubric, for part one, you are submitting a cropped image of the ingredient statement. And that is from the images that you uploaded from part one. You're going to crop the ingredient statement and paste it at the top of a blank doc, uh, document. That's it. The only criteria here is that the ingredient list is legible. So if the image is small, but you can still read it, that's okay. You don't want to blow it up so much that you can't see what is actually written there anymore. And that is worth five of 75 points. The next thing we have is format. And if you probably realized, you probably realized after part one, I should say, not if you probably realized, because it doesn't make any sense. So in doing part one, you realize that format is important for these assignments. What that means is follow the rubric and try to do what, do what is asked of you. So, you have your, and I'm gonna show you a, an example of this in, in a few minutes, but so at the top of this blank document, you're pasting an image of the ingredients. Below that, you're going to create a three row table for each of the ingredients listed. In row one, you're gonna put the name of the ingredient. In row two, you're gonna put the role or purpose from the, uh, of the ingredient. And in row three, you're going to put the pasted link for the information that you found in row two. So many of them, there, it's gonna be the link again, that's down here from the FDA food inventory. Okay, so the format is worth 10 out of the 75 possible points, which brings us down to the third criteria, which is content. For row one, you're going to have the name of the ingredient as it is listed on your product. For row two, you're going to, again, you wanna look at the FDA food inventory first, and then you're going to put in the, the function or the role of the food as it is, as it is, or food ingredient as it is defined according to the FDA's food inventory. Some of the things don't always show up uh, correctly, so you might need to do a search for wheat instead of 
whole grain wheat flour. And as far as additives go, the majority of them are going to be listed in the inventory. If you have an ingredient that's not found in the FDA inventory, you need to add the phrase in row two, not found in FDA inventory, and then do a web search to find the information that you can add to row two to explain what the purpose is of that ingredient in the food. So in row three, you're going to paste a link for the FDA inventory plus any additional links if applicable for that ingredient. And, uh, oh, here we go. Do a web search. So some of you, some of you, this will not, none of this will apply. Some of you, part of it or all of it will apply. This sentence right here. Do a web search for sources of any natural flavors, artificial flavors, vitamins, and minerals. So if you have pineapple juice and it has vitamins added, look to find out where the source of those vitamins come from. If you have something labeled as a natural flavor in a product or an artificial flavor in a product, those are things that are added. So I, it, it's not always, so like corn chips, if it says natural flavor, they're not adding a corn chip flavor. They're adding a naturally sourced flavor from something else. So see what you can find on the web related to the, that specific product, what natural flavor might be in there. And that information also would go in row, row two, okay? Uh, so content, of course, is the most important part of this assignment because that's where you're explaining what the parts of each, uh, each, what the role each product or ingredient plays in, in the product itself. So that's, that's pretty, pretty important. So, and the whole gist of the assignment. So that's 55 out of 75 points. And then we go down to the last thing, complexity and completeness. It's worth five out of the 75 points. If you had a product that's only four ingredients long and it said that there was vitamins in there and you didn't tell, you didn't search for where they were, then you didn't fully meet the assignment, uh, the rubric and it wasn't very complex. So some of your, some of your products might be, you know, 25 ingredients long. So if you're doing 25 ingredients that you're searching compared to someone that's only doing three, you know, um, the person with three better make sure they have extra information to, to get the full points. Okay. Uh, if there's any questions about that, you can always, send me a message or send me an email. Again, the format for each ingredient, you make a separate three row table. And I'm going to show you a little bit of, of I'm gonna show you an example now of the whole process. So let's take, let's go back to the Kodiak cakes. That was my product. Again, the ingredient statement is is here. So all I'm doing from this pro from this is I'm going to take a screenshot. And again, you don't have to worry about making it super big. You don't want it to be so large that the font gets too, the print gets too fuzzy or unclear that it's illegible. You want to make sure that, that you could read it, that I could read it. So as long as I'm able to zoom in, that's okay. So now we have our blank document. This is just demo. So actually, let's see now. If 
I can copy this and then paste it. That's probably even too big, but it is what it is. That's okay. So, um, what I'm going to do now is insert a three row table and let's start with our first ingredient. Actually, I'm you are going to start with your first ingredient. So first thing would be 100% whole grain wheat flour, then 100% whole grain oat flour, then wheat protein isolate, then whey protein concentrate, brown sugar, milk protein concentrate, buttermilk powder, leavening, but in the parentheses is basically the monocalcium phosphate and baking soda. So I would write these as two separate, two separate ingredients, okay? And then sea salt. So again, you would start at the top and then work your way down. And just so you know that the items listed at the top of the list are in the largest quantity and the ones at the bottom of the list are in the smallest quantity. This contains part, I actually don't even need that, so I should, I'm gonna crop this. Crop this out. There you go. So just to show you, the, so there's our three row table. So I have 100% all grain wheat wheat flour then leave a space and insert a new three row table and i would put in next is 100% whole grain oat flour. Insert wheat protein isolate. Space whey protein concentrate and space. Now just for the, of course, you're gonna write down every single one, but let's say that uh, just for the purposes of this assignment, just for the demonstration, we're gonna type in, you know, monocalcium, monocalcium phosphate. See it right here, leavening. So. So we have the name monocalcium phosphate. Now we want to identify what the role is, right? So I'm just going to move that over. And then we have the link that I clicked from the, this is the link that was provided. This is the substances added to food. We go down here to the search and type in monocalcium phosphate, show items, and then tells us right here, calcium phosphate is, it's used for dough strengthener, firming agent, flour treatment agent, leavening agent, 
malting or fermenting aid, nutrient supplement, pH control agent, sequestrant, stabilizer, thickener. Okay, so we know that it's a leavening agent, but what I'm going to do is just copy these, paste, and then I'm going to go back in just to make it easy and just bold this. I should be able to do that. So this is what it, these are all of the things that can be used for, but this is the purpose in this product. And we know that because it said leavening agent in the label. And leavening is what makes the product rise. So in this circumstance, when water and heat are added, it releases carbon dioxide and that leavens the, the pancakes. So what if you didn't know that it was the leavening agent? You could look, you could do a web search to see why would this be used in a pancake mix? And then that would help you out in the, in this category here in the rubric, the complexity and completeness. Some, it's easier to find some of it, uh, some information is a little bit harder, but if, if you just copied all of them from, from this uh, inventory, that's okay. But ideally you wanna know what it's actually doing in the product that you are examining. Okay, and then for row three, what I would do is copy that link and then paste it into row three. So what that means is when you submit yours, if I have any questions, I'm just gonna click the links that you provided and, and take a look, okay? Now, that was one product. So we should be done here now. Uh, oops, let's do this. I'll go back. Now we're going to the next item on our list, insert three row table. Three. There it is. Go back up to see what our next thing, oh, baking soda. So baking soda, let's type that in. Let's see what happens if we, when we do our search for baking soda. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. And we look at what baking soda is used for. Again, emulsifier or emulsifier salt flavor enhancer. If there are things that you don't know, like if you don't remember what an emulsifier is or if you don't know what an uh, adjuvant is or desiccant, or any of those phrases, you should look them up. And so again, here we go. We're gonna add this to part two, uh, row two. And again, we know that it's a leavening agent in this case. So I'm going to bold it. Here's the The link, and that link gets pasted into row number three. So let's go back up to look at some of the others. So what 
way. Whey pro oh, I typed in wheat protein. So let's see what happens with wheat protein. There are no records. So we know that the wheat protein is, let's see, wheat protein isolate. We're not going to find anything there. So then we would need to do a search, wheat protein isolate. And what do we find? We'll try not to go to Livestrong first. We'll try to go, or a shopping site. We'll try to go somewhere that, let's see, MGP ingredients. And this is wheat protein isolate. It's a wet processed wheat flour, yields two important products. So we have the gluten is the protein and it's just added to it's just gluten essentially to add to the uh, protein content now if you really wanted to go crazy and uh, go really far with this assignment and you definitely don't want to do this for every single ingredient or need to but you can try to look up what the essential amino acid or the amino acid profile, if something has pro is claiming to be a protein source, then you could look at the amino, try to find out what the amino acid profile is to see if it contains all the essential amino acids. That's if you wanted to do something extra, it's not really required, but if your product has a few, very few ingredients and it's uh, meant to be making protein claims, then that's something you might wanna look into for maybe at least one of the ingredients. So it's just to add protein. Uh, let's see, let's go back. So what would I actually do here? Um, so I would say, not found in FDA inventory. And it adds nutritional value. It would help if I type words correctly. And then just put in protein. And then I would take this copy. it right there and that's it uh let's see whey protein let's see if whey protein shows up in the inventory so i'm just searching for whey to see what comes up so we have whey and then whey protein concentrate so we're going to look at the And I'm going to change adds nutritional value. You could say added nutritional supplement. Okay. So now we're looking at whey protein concentrate. So we're going to click on that and it is used as a flavor enhancer, flaming, uh, flavoring agent or adjuvant, and it is a nutri nutrient supplement. Why did I change? So yeah, it will say nutrient supplement, not nutritional. So nutrient supplement. And then we just Hold that. Copy. And paste. So you would do this 
for all of the ingredients. You could go back up and fill all of them in. So they would all be in separate three row tables. Okay, let's see. So whey protein concentrate. No, actually we're gonna, we're gonna stop there. So that's the, this is the format you wanna have your th three row table for each ingredient. Make sure they're all filled in. This one, the whey protein concentrate was taken directly from the FDA inventory. And then I highlighted nutrient supplement or bolded it, I should say. And then below that in row three is the link to that. And then there's a space and then another three row table where we have monocalcium phosphate, a leavening agent, that's where it's found, and then baking soda again. So again, if you really, really wanted to, you don't have to. You would, I don't know why my spelling is so off today. Uh, you could try to find out what the amino acid profile is for the protein products or any of them. If you really, any ingredient that's there for the, to add for nutrient purposes to see what the amino acid profile is. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the assignment goes. It is due now again, it's due on October 5th. So whether you're in the 5.30 p.m. class or the 8.30 a.m. class. Again, any questions, let me know. I'll go back to this. Yeah, so it's due on October 5th at your scheduled class time. And this actually is the while I'm while I'm here, we'll talk about this. If you go to modules for September 28th for this week, I have for September 28th, complete the attendance verification, which is below. Review the food ingredients and colors PDF file, which is here, and then work on what is in your food part two, which is due October 5th. This is the, the PDF, it's eight pages, it's taken from the FDA website, it tells you a little bit about food additives and colors and different preservatives. And the next, it's kind of weird how it goes down, but examples of them are on the next page. So this is the table which continues down to here. So. Uh, ascorbic acid, which we know is vitamin C, is an example of something that could be used as a preservative. So here are some different examples of additives, ingredients, colors, and their purpose and their function. And then it's just, it tells you a little bit about the approval process and there's some questions about artificial colors. Ye years ago, as it says in the 70s, there were some, it was believed that um, artificial colors could lead to hyperactivity. So a lot of different information. And again, you can go directly to the website to get to expand this information, but this isn't a easy to read format. So I would look at this first, then go back into your, into the assignment tab but there is, this is it as far as the lecture is concerned for September, uh, September 28th. Again, any questions, you can message me or email me. Good luck, everybody.